In this video, we are going to work on the Add Connect page. But first of all, going to the Add Connect page is triggered from the Contacts page. Right? So this is the Contacts page I'm looking at right now. And it has a list view. And a list view is just a single view. So we really need to have a list view in a layout. So we have talked about the uh, stack layout before. Uh, today, instead of using stack layout, I would like to use the grid so that we can learn more things. So a grid is basically like a table. It has columns and rows. Right? So if I put a grid here, so if I don't specify columns or rows, then you can basically just put a list view here. Right, One view is going to still work you're not actually using a grade as a grade, right? To use it properly, we need to define like how many columns and how many rows and how big each column or rows are, right? For that, we need two properties. One is called row definition. So you can see row definitions. And for this particular page, we are going to have the list view in the first row and then a button, which is the add button in the second row. So we have two rows. So here we basically, uh, in the row definition, we just specify the height, like X, Y, Z. So in this case, we have uh, three rows, and the first row's height is X, the second row's height is Y, and of course the last row's height is Z. But what about you don't want to actually specify a specific number. You just want to say the last row is, for example, 50. And then the first row takes the rest of the space. Then you can just say star. Right? Star means it takes as much as it can. And then we can specify the column definition. How many columns do, I, do we have? And how big is each column? Right. So it's the same format. X, Y, Z. Each one of them has to be a number. You can see that it's complaining. You cannot use X, Y, Z because it doesn't really know how, much, how big what each one column is. So in this case, we actually only have uh, one column, right? And then in the list view or in, in the inside the grid, we need to specify which row and column each view is within. So the list view is in row number one and column number one. So we can just say grade dot row number one. This is the index starting from zero. So basically when we refer to the first row, we're gonna say zero, right? And then, and then of course the column is also zero. Now, when it comes to the second one, which is going to be a button, and we'll give it a name first. This is going to be a add button. And the text is add contact, for example. And we are going to add a clicked event handler since we're here already. Okay. But this button needs to be in the second row and first column. So we're going to say grade dot row second. Second row is number one. And grade dot column. And it's going to be zero the first call all right let's run the application and see whether we have a correct page we can't see anything in the application but i noticed that i made a mistake here it's not this is not number of columns this is how big the column is because we only have one so we can use star because this column should expand to as much as it should right so now we can see all of the data in the back end let's go to the view code we have this add event handler. Here, we want to navigate to our add contact page. Okay, so let's continue working on coding the added, uh, the add contact page. So let's go to add contact page. There's basically this welcome page, right? So there's basically nothing in it. It does have a, a cancel button. So we don't need any of this because the contact control already has a cancel button and it has everything else that we need. So basically we can go to the added contact page and we can just copy 
this and go back to add contact page and then we just replace this replace everything uh, of course the namespace also needs to be added so we can go to the top and then we can specify you know, the controls come from the controls which is right here and now the problem is fixed so um on save needs to be recreated the event handler new handler on cancel new handler and on error also needs to be created new event handler that's it at the front end very simple that's the beauty of creating a reusable control we don't do a lot of work because all of the work already been done right Going back to the back end, unsave. So what should we do on uh, unsave? We need to call the repository to add the new contact. But do we already have a add method here? We don't. So first of all, we need to create a add contact method. Right? So here we create a static method, and then we're gonna it's gonna be void and and call it add contact and of course uh, the parameter is a contact and then we are going to first of all we need to get a maximum ID right? remember this is a um, in memory so in memory data store so we need to manually get the the ID so we need to get the contact ID the maximum contact ID right and then uh, we can say contact dot contact id so we assign the id to it so it's maximum id plus one right and after that we can just add this contact into the contacts list okay so that's it that's our method very simple method without much validation you know if we add a duplicate contact we can always try to delete it which we're going to work on later so coming back to the add contact page inside save event handler we can use the contact repository and then we can call the add contact and of course here we need to create a new contact okay just like this and then we can specify that name equals to contact control dot name right remember that we exposed we expose all of the property out and then Visual Studio is suggesting email equals to email uh, I hope it actually suggests the next one but it doesn't it doesn't always help but it's already helping a little bit then we just specify address is address and phone is phone and then we close with a semicolon so that's our add contact remember here when it comes to this method everything's already uh, validated right it's a valid contact uh, and then if there is an error then this on error event handler will be triggered and the only thing we need to do here is just to display the error message right so we can say display alert and the title is error message is from the event arguments and the cancel button is okay Right. so this e is the error message which comes from the parameter here which is the event arguments of that event handler uh, and then of course the show um the on cancel event handler just basically you know go back we can just uh shell dot current dot uh, go to a sync and where are we going we are going back to the contact page we can use dot dot but if not, then we can use, um, we specify the root, right? And then we can say name of, I think we already have a, yeah, we already have a console. So in here, we created a new event handler. Uh, that's fine. We can just copy this over. okay so when we go to the root we always try to specify slash slash 
or uh, if we don't, then we can use dot dot to navigate back to the, the to the previous page, right? To the parent page. So I think that's everything. Let's give it a try. I notice a problem here that after this add contact, we need to navigate back to the contacts page. So I just duplicated this line here. Okay, now let's give it a try. Okay, so we have this list of contacts and then we can click on any of them. Going to the added contact page, still working. Now let's test the add contact page. So I think we're having some problems here with the layout. Okay, so let's try to fix the layout problem first. Um, because the hot reload actually works for the front end, so we don't have to stop. So we can fix that very quickly. Go to the contacts page here. Uh, I think we need to add some paddings for the grid because you can see the button is not positioned properly. So let's add some, some padding. So let's add maybe five. Let's see how it looks like. Now, now it looks much better. You can see that everything is uh, positioned correctly. So clicking on, on the add contact button, this should take us to the add contact page. Now you can see we have all of this. Clicking on the save button, this should trigger the validations and we should be able to see all of the validation errors. So name is required, right? So then I'm going to add, I don't know, this person's name is Monday Smith. And then clicking on the save button again to trigger the email validation. Email is required and format has to be correct. So let's call it just smith at gmail.com. In the spirit of testing, I'm providing a wrong format. So then it's actually validating it. Um, and then phone number is optional, address is optional. So I'm just going to provide something. Clicking on the save button, going back, we can see Monday Smith. Okay, so it's working beautifully. So again, let's take a look what we have done. Go to the add contact page. You can see that we basically did almost nothing. Right, just reusing the functionality that we already created. So this is the beauty of using a reusable control. Okay, so that's everything I want to cover in this video. I'll see you in the next one.